my experience, I don't have an experience negative or positive here in St. Michael's with the um, vacation rental by owners, but I was surprised to see that when the county, the county's going into it, they're revamping their um, zoning code and they're addressing the VRBOs in the zoning code and there's no restriction on your lease, lease time. You can rent it for one night, you can rent it for two nights. And going to several of the public meetings in the beginning, I got to hear some of the other citizens complain about horror stories in different places of the county where they have the partiers. The guys come in on the weekends, not guys, just guys, but they come in on the weekends and they're there to party, you know, and they're up all night. Um, and and evidently, a judge has ruled that VBR, VRBOs is a matter of right in a residential zone, which to me as a building inspector and a former build, builder kind of think it's crazy because if you look at the definitions of the rental and a bed and breakfast and an inn and even a hotel, the definitions are all pretty much the same. But yet the other instances, the hotels, the uh, bed and breakfasts and the lodging houses require special inspections and certain safety features. You know, maybe you, that you can't ban somebody from renting their house out on a short term, short term, that the counties can license the use and they can put restrictions on the use. And that's what we're trying to, you know. Years ago, the county council stood up for the, for the uh, sprinkler bills. There was a tragic story and they were way ahead of all the other counties in Maryland and required sprinklers be put in, not only new houses, but additions and renovations. And that was forward thinking, and I think, you know, that's what they need to look at on these VRBOs. If you get, you know, some people coming in for a weekend, they're going to a wedding somewhere, they don't want to rent a hotel room, they can get the whole family in a house, they're in that house at night, a fire goes off, they're not familiar with the house, how do they get out? You know, I mean, I get, all this is addressed with bed and breakfast and inns. Mm -hmm. yeah. And naturally hotels. I think um, New York, Downtown New York has a limit that has to be 30 days. Can't be any, you know, any sooner. Um, I think New Orleans has a, a, in their downtown French Quarter. It has to. It can't be less than a 60-day rental. In other places, it has to be 30 days. And I think that's probably because that protects the hotels and the bed and breakfasts that are licensed. I think they need to get some restrictions and some regulations that worry about the safety and the welfare of not only the renters and the well-being of the people that live around the area. Zoning is a basic instrument that all counties use, you know, for, for, that they use. So, you know, they have residential zones and they have certain things that you can do in a residential zone and a lot of things that you can't do in residential zones. And it just amazes me that they think that a a vacation rental by owner, which is, in my opinion, is no different than a bed and breakfast. The only difference is, at bed and breakfast, you have somebody on staff all the time. I believe that not only the elected officials, but even the staff in planning and zoning yeah. should use common sense yeah. to work for their constituents. And their constituents, not necessarily are the renters coming in, yeah. it's the people living around these houses yeah. that need to be taken in consideration.